And so good morning, everyone. The session of today is a little bit somehow a continuation of the right of process initiated yesterday by Daniel. Today we'll go through the end-to-end -end scenario for um, disposal of an item by sale. Um, the scenario we prepared is that um, in the in the stock, a computer is determined to be obsolete, so the computer will have to go through the write-off and disposal processes. Um, these are the in the cover page that you will receive. This is a copy of the body of the exercise that you are going to receive as well. In the cover page of the of the exercise, you will find as uh, usual a list of all the steps, and if you see here, is quite a lengthy process uh, that is involved in the end-to-end, -end, from uh, creating the notification for write-off all the way to deactivate the equipment. Um, it's quite a similar process as we saw yesterday. There are some differences. For example, since this scenario, the item is uh, found in the stock in the warehouse, there will not be a reservation. I would divide the process into two sub-processes, let's say. The first one goes all the way from creating the notification, where we need to mark it as a write-off, approving the notification and putting it into process. Um, and then to update the equipment uh, accordingly, for example, we will do a first update and we'll set the equipment as write-off in process status. Then we will move to the notification in order to follow the business process for writing off uh, uh, material. So local property so, um, survey uh, review, and then awaiting the decision, and then the review approved. Remember that in the case of the notifications, um, the statuses uh, need to navigate from the previous to the, to the next, uh, not being able to skip, let's say, um, statuses. Okay? That's why we need to update three times in a row the status of the notification, and then when the review is approved for the write-off, then we will update the equipment accordingly and we will mark it as sale disposal method. And later on, there will be a couple of warehouse transactions that will uh, follow the, um, the notification and the equipment status. Once the sale, once the right of by sale has been approved, then in the warehouse the actions will be that they will take the specific, in this case is a computer, they will take the computer from the bin and then they will put it in a disposal bin and the warehouse user will confirm the, the physical movement of the laptop and the notification will be uh, up, um, updated as in process. Um, this is the first, let's say, process, which is all the way from creating the notification to approve the write-off and the disposal method and to put the and to find in the warehouse the, the material and to put it in a designated bin to be, um, let's say, taken out of the warehouse. The second big, uh, the second part of the process will be uh, to create a sales order all the way until the deactivation of the equipment. Why I'm saying this? Because creating a sales order is like creating an internal, let's say, purchase order, but for, for um, selling something. So the process will be creating a sales order the sales order will um, we will create out of the sales order an outbound delivery document where we will put all the uh, in this case we are not going to put packing but we will um, amend the quantity and other details the storage location etc and then we will the second part of the process is in the warehouse side of the process to create a transfer order for picking from the been that we left the laptop in the previous step to an stacking area. Stacking is with one 
¿sí? for goods issue. Okay? Once the laptop has been moved to an staging area for goods issue, then, uh, uh, then the inventory user will post a goods issue, so the inventory is reduced definitely. And the next uh, task is just to complete all the tasks pending in the notification, uh, complete the notification, and the activate the equipment. So, in my opinion, these are the two, let's say, sub processes um, involved. Of course, uh, I haven't said it before. Feel free to add um, any of your comments. Are you have more uh, real experience on the ground on completing the write-off and sales? And these are the related BI reports. Uh, there is one specifically for write-off and disposal, which is the report 27. And in the, in the cover page that you will receive, you see that you can do all the steps by using the same uh, credentials and the same password. And if you don't have any more comments, we are going to move into the creation of the exercise. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say is that there are some job base that are quite useful. I have listed them here. Uh, the first one is on the equipment right of impairment and disposal. It explains quite well um, the different steps. And if in the conversation uh, that we are going to have here or you have it outside the system, you disagree on some of the steps is because in the annex of the uh, um, job aid, you can find different, let's say, um, order of tasks depending if it's at UNHQ and offices away, for example, and this will be the template uh, task list uh, for these offices. Uh, then there is another uh, for other cases. And this is the right of standard template task list for SPM and peacekeeping, which I believe is the is the one that you are going to use. Uh, then I like this obey as well, especially because uh, here you can find the templates for the notifications for write off. Uh, I believe that you will be or you are using already this uh, template number in order to create your initiate the process of creating your notification for the write off. This is the template for write off notification template. And for the rest, you have uh, the status sequence for the write off notifications that gives you an explanation of the uh, abbreviations. And uh, it's quite well explained. One thing that it doesn't cover is um, the process when uh, a fixed asset is evolved, how to retire fixed assets. We are not going to see it today now as we are going to use a computer, which is a um, equipment ID, but we will do it on Monday. Okay, the fixed asset retirement. It's about typing 3T codes. And it should be embedded in the process of write-off and disposal whenever there's, there is a fixed asset involved. There will be a set of tasks, that, a set, uh, one task, for example, that states retirement of fixed asset. Since this is a process specifically done by financial accounting colleagues, we, we are going to separate this part and we will explain it on Monday. But for your information, what we will say on Monday, it's a task listed in the task list in the notification in the case where a fixed asset is involved. Um, having said this, um, there is other um, job aids that, in my opinion, are relevant to this process and a user guide on the sales and distribution as we will be creating a sales order. You will do this exercise using the client 510. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to 
login in Citrix. Um, let me see. Thanks, Elena. In the meantime, while you log in, uh, basically in the chat, uh, Pietro is the only one that has intervened so far. Oh. Just to make a mention of the uh, statuses of the notification, when you erroneously, let's say, select one and then save, so it makes a bit of sense for the approval status, right? Once the approver comes in and says approved and saves, unless, of course, they would be able to, I guess, not disapprove but maybe reject or block the notification if something happened but it, it is true that it's a bit strange that you cannot change the status once you've changed it and saved it in the notification maybe you have encountered this problem testing the exercises as well it, it's not something i was fully aware of but it, it seems like that's the case according to what pietro is saying so if, if you do make a mistake as assigning or approving and then you save, you won't be able to uh, backtrack. No, you'll have to start again. OK, good to know. Yeah. Thank you, Pietro. Um, let me get my user ID for the demo. And the first uh, task to do is to create a notification re with reference to the template for write-off that we saw in the in the job aid. Here we're going to use a special one for prepared for the training. It's in the body of your exercise, and this is the number. So we put it as a reference. And here it is. Uh, what we're going to do, well, we're going to edit the notification. I assume you are familiar with this process. For example, we're going to add a text, write off and disposal of a computer. We will reference the serial number of the computer. It's found here in my case. The same, we will, this is the coding, which is uh, important and is, used, is linked mainly uh, with the BI reports as well. So we will use write-off and let's say obsolences, obsolences uh, which is the case of the scenario that we are showing now. Then we will type a short description and then description of the item right um, off uh, and just this copying and pasting um, Number, let's say this one. And then this is um, as well important as uh, some reports are, are put by using this data. This is, we are selecting, we are indicating basically that we are in a right of case, and then these are. And according to also what's mentioned here in the chat, there are different, let's say, um, control mechanisms uh, depending on the threshold of the value of the value of the items that are about to be written off. In this case, it will be the designated authority, as I understood yesterday, that anything below two thousand five hundred dollars uh, can be written off by designated authority and let's continue we will set the priority we will uh, leave this uh, 
uh, date free and then we will estimate for example when the process is going to finish and we will update the required end accordingly this is the planner group that is uh, going to handle this um, right of process basically t00 is ict and this part is um, completed we will move to the location oh no we will move to the location data you will see in case that you are using a fix as an asset number or an equipment uh, an equipment in this case the data is already pre-populated and this is pre-populated based on the material on the equipment number used so you don't need to insert anything new it's uh, pulled already and then you will have based on the template of the notification that you have selected you will have a set of tasks that are pre-populated um, even the um, notification user or disposal planner can uh, update the task list adding and removing accordingly to the specific process uh, as daniel did yesterday for the sake of this exercise let's put the same business partner for in charge of all the tasks this will not be the real case but this makes us go much faster and Okay, so we will mark all of them. Uh, responsible is Russell. Then we will mark um, plant finished. So we are going to plan as finished tomorrow for all of them. Copy, let me see. We see 2017 as the template was from 2017. So that's why these are the dates in the past. I think that if you have the, uh, the at the beginning of the notification, the date at the bottom, if you would have changed that one, I think uh, all of these would have been in the, in the future. You, when it said if you wanted to assign new dates, I, I realized that the date that was there was 2017. When I said no, Yes. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Thanks. So maybe if we say yes, it's changed. Yeah, the thing right. is the date for the reference was in the past, 2017. So when you didn't change the dates, they remained like that. Uh -huh. Thanks for the info. Well, now I need to do this all the way. No. Elena? Yes. Can I just uh, make a, co a comment? I mean, it's something that I use. If you want to copy paste, I think it's possible if you do control Y and then copy paste all the rest. Also in the Mac computers, because it, it hasn't been working. I'm using, okay, let me try. Control. Control Y. Mm -hmm. Now copy, copy the area you want, copy the lines that you want. Copy. And then control D. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, these are the tasks uh, we need to um, release them. I'm sorry, select all of them release and the activity and this is a um, tab that is specifically for the uh, notification for sales and we will um, touch upon yeah, uh, later today basically this is the the field where we are going to put what is the business partner for the customer and by clicking here, we will generate from the notification a sales order. 
in order to generate the process of uh, selling the materials, creating the outbound delivery and then moving the item to the stacking area for good issue and then completing the notification and deactivating the equipment. Okay, so if it's uh, correct, we're going to uh, save the notification. Oh, yeah. And I look at smoke again. Yeah, you see right there, uh, Elena, the malfunction start date shows 2017. Mm -hmm. And, and as not uh, assigning new dates, I guess it, it kept the one from the reference at the beginning. Um, All right, and, and uh, yeah, the, the only thing you were missing there was the uh, planner group linked to that uh, piece of equipment, right? As we explained uh, the first time we created a notification, there would be the, uh, the, you have to assign a group that is in charge of uh, creating, if let's say service orders for any type of, of malfunction for that piece of equipment, that would be the group that is in charge of that and responsible for that versus the work center, which is the one that is dedicated to actually performing the maintenance if required. Thanks, Elena. Okay, this is our notification number. Then the next step is to uh, approve the notification. So the same, let's say uh, that it's a different role and we are not changing the role. So they will be in charge of reviewing the notification and then to change the request approved, the status, and to save. And then the next step is to put it in process as disposal planner. Sorry, I let me double check what is the uh, status I put. Request approved. This was okay. Yeah. Okay. The next step is then we will move to um, according to my list. We need to update the equipment. Sorry, we need to process the notification. Okay, that is missing. Quest approved. Okay, where can I put the just hold on a sec? I did this, I did this, and then why do I guys do you see uh, what I cannot Elena, see? Yeah, at what stage you okay you you approved it now and you're saving <laughs> it? Um, and I click the arrow uh, for putting it in yeah. process. Yes, uh, but I hold should on. be we have a, uh, I'm looking also at the chat and Pietro may have realized that at the beginning when you created your notification, you may have selected the wrong type. Oh. Of notification. Even from the, uh, right from the beginning when you were generating the IW51. The reference, you mean? The, the PW type of notification. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I see P1 there, yeah. Oh. I cannot change it from here. Okay, uh, I need yeah. to. 
At I this know. point, I think after it's approved and all, uh, we won't be able to. Okay, so let's begin again. I'm sorry for this. I just miss it. The um... okay. So I think in, in this particular case, you see the the example of the selection and how important I it is to select. Path. Yeah, exactly. Right. So right there at this point, the notification type it may be defaulted to a specific one. Changing it is going to change everything about the notification as you go on, right? As Elena just noticed when approving, suddenly uh, something that was supposed to happen did not. And eventually in this particular case, thanks Pietro for realizing that the uh, notification type was a different one. So the uh, notification acted differently. So it's very important to uh, keep an eye out on that one. It's something uh, similar to what can happen to you when creating um, the STO as well from the str okay they usually there's a default type that appears uh, especially if you've um i don't know if you're using a user that has selected a different type uh from maybe an exercise you'll be faced with that the system automatically defaults one type and you need to make sure you switch it uh, thanks again pietro and also uh, gianluca i'm looking at your uh, chat here uh, checking netbook value or depreciation value in the system before inserting designated authority in the notification. Okay, does it always have to be in BI? Well, of course, not necessarily in BI. Now, the particular T code where we could see netbook value or depreciation value, maybe we can. Is the uh, is AS zero uh, three? But I'm not going to do it now because then I get yeah. distracted. And uh, all right, no, that's AS not three. Well, well, AS03, we're going to add it here to the chat. And then maybe if we have time later, we can jump in and take a look at it. Thanks, Elena. So, Brian, you told me if I change the uh, malfunction start date, if I remove it, then the tasks uh, should be. Uh, it, it was just a, a guess. Uh, um, just make sure that you set the new dates. Um, when, once it asks you, but I think since you're basing it on a reference that has that date of 2017, the task list may still remain the same. We'll see now once once it tells you if it changes automatically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, in this particular case, no, uh, it doesn't. Uh, it hasn't asked you yet to uh, accept the new dates. But now that you have the uh, the control, uh, the copy and paste. There you go. You can just do that with the dates as well. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just writing the T code here, AS03, in the chat for Gianluca. Sorry, guys, speaking and uh, typing is not my, at the same time, is not easy. I'm typing the estimated uh, finalization dates of the different tasks, and I'm putting all of them as tomorrow, uh, just for moving with the exercise, although they are not realistic. And the start date. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Elena, mm -hmm. sorry, maybe I, I didn't I didn't explain that well. You can copy several lines at the same time when you, you do the control Y. You can copy those three uh, lines at the same time and then paste them below. Aha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't explain it properly the first time. <laughs> No problem. Um, then activity sale, okay, tasks. Then I will uh, select all of them. Uh, I'm going to release them. I'm going to save the notification. Planner group again. It, it is removed. I'm going to put it. Um, Okay, and now it's okay. the approver that is going to approve the notification. And of course, they bring in the, the tasks. And now, okay, we should be able to put it in process. The date of the approval of the notification, in the case that there are fixed assets, is going to trigger the retirement of the fixed assets. So uh, it's important as is it a trigger for the financial colleagues working in finance in order to set the date of when it's going to be uh, retired the equipment. Okay. This is not part of the exercise, but in case that we have a fixed asset involved in the, in the right of process. Then we're going to move forward and let's see we were in the step of um, we put it in process and then the notification approver will set it as in um, right of request prepare. Let me see. Um, now finally I can see it. Thank you so much, Pietro. And then what we're going to do is to set the equipment status accordingly. So we will select um, the equipment serial number. This is it. We will paste it. Here it's in the warehouse and idle. I'm going to um, write off in process. So now it's going to be uh, set as write off in process. So we kind of uh, block the movements of the, the actions in the equipment and following the structure of the exercise, the next item is to update the notification in uh, all the way until it is the review is approved. So this is like the local property board. And then we need to update again. It's not possible to uh, skip statuses of the, of the status in the notification. Hold on, we were in four. Now we move to five. And then okay. we reach the approval of the notification. The next step 
Sorry, Elena. Just uh, for a quick explanation, since I see you were jumping from statuses and saving really quick, can you just explain more or less uh, why you just went through a series of statuses? Sure. Um, okay, in the notification, there are, as we mark the notification, the type is for right of and sale, the notification is defaulting a series of uh, statuses set statuses that the notification has to run through without being able to skip the statuses. So what we did is, um, let's say that in parallel in the business process, there, there has been a series of um, approvals uh, required in order to get the approval for the equipment to be written off. And what we did is to let, let's say in, uh, to follow what will happen in the reality with regards to the to the to the different steps that you need to go in order to an item to be written off for example you presented let's say the the case for the review to the local property board and then you will wait for uh, approval the decision and then the let's say the the request has been approved same ways as we are moving the status of the notifications the disposal planner will need to update the tasks that are involved for example, let's say here the defaulted tasks state that there is an uh, there is the meeting, so we will select this one and we will mark it as complete. For example, the same notify notify secretary of LPSB, we will mark it as complete. This one we haven't done it, so we can remove it. Transfer equipment to warehouse, not yet. I see that in this, in this template for the notification, the tasks are not in any particular order. So what we are, what we are doing is, uh, while we are marking uh, what activities are completed, we are also following up what is happening offline Umoja in order to reflect the status of the notification. by going through the different status. The same way we are doing with the equipment. We mark from an equipment idle that is that was in the stock in the warehouse to we mark it as write off in process. Okay. All right. The Thanks, Helen. I wasn't sure you were uh, done. Thank you. I think it, it's just necessary for those that are new to all this and that, that you went through a, a series of different statuses uh, quickly just so that they understand what exactly was happening, right? In a sense, it's tedious, but it's a way to keep tracking step by step, right? Every transaction you have performed and every status in the notification that has to be changed little by little. Uh, while these steps can be done the way you have done them, right? Like just one after the other they necessarily have to be done in order and they have a meaning right behind them. That's the only thing I wanted to make sure was understood, right? That the, the change of status was linked to something, actions performed in the system, and they should be performed with a reason behind them and not just simply, right, selecting and, and moving forward with the statuses. So thanks for that explanation. I think it clarifies a lot. Okay, besides that, we are um, updating the status of the equipment. In this case, the equipment hasn't been assigned to any functional location or to any um, partner. So what we're going to do, as uh, also Danny mentioned yesterday, we are going to relate the notification for write-off to the equipment. Uh, and how do we do this? By populating in the inventory number field the notification number. It, and if you remember in the notification, you, we populated the serial number of the equipment. So both documents are related to one to each other. That was my notification number and then um, it is linked already. So we will move forward. And the next actions what, that we need to do 
is um, to create a transfer order in the warehouse in order to move the, the computer from the current uh, bin to another bin called for disposal. And then we will confirm the transfer order. This is by using the tickle called LT01 and LT12. So let's move to it. Warehouse. Just one sec. Input that was in 999, like internal movement. If you don't remember, you, we can we can always check um, by using the matchbox. Then. It's the material, and the material is in the cover page. In this case, we're going to move one. The plant is US00. And yeah, that's all. We will click on enter. Um, here is um, we're going we're going to we are going to indicate the source and the destination of uh, the materials. So you will use your cover page in order to find the no. It's in the exercise. So we went through this. After the notification, update the status. Um, these are the source storage uh, bin, and this is the destination storage bin that we need to insert. So let me move to here. And as for destination, this is the storage type. Then we created a link called disposal. Let's check. Check your entries. Yes. So this is the transfer order, the number 1217 creating. So it's not for put away is not for picking, it's just an internal movement. Then is the warehouse user who uh, will confirm that the movement uh, has uh, been done in, in the warehouse area. So it will be, we will select pick and transfer and then he will double check that this is the material that the material that he has uh, been cutting from this shell to this uh, storage bin. It's a computer and he or she will confirm internally. The item so far hasn't left the warehouse area. Thanks, Elena, uh, for explaining this. I am not 100% sure if uh, Daniel also covered this uh, transaction yesterday, but nonetheless, just to uh, review right, what you're doing and why you're doing this directly in this particular case, right, the internal movement, like you're correctly saying, of the goods. And now you're also mentioning we're still in the same warehouse, so we're basically just moving something from one bin to another so that we can process the write-off for this particular material. So I know at the beginning of the training in the exercise for, for example, physical goods receipt, virtual goods receipt, and so on, you have extras at the end of your exercise that talk about this internal movement. We haven't covered it that much. I, I think yesterday uh, Daniel was doing it already. Elena is doing so again. So it's basically just movement of goods uh, physically. So when we're creating these transfer orders, they're the same transfer orders that we 
would generate when we're either receiving goods from an external source or uh, performing a transfer of goods. But in this sense, what we're doing is creating directly a transfer order to move goods physically from one bin in the warehouse to another bin in the warehouse. And in this particular case, uh, Elena, I think you're moving it to the uh, 999. Yes, um, I'm moving to the 999 and then I'm moving to a bin called disposal. Let's say that uh, this is a configuration that it's made at the mission level. They have decided to, in this scenario, to create a bin for all the disposals. So basically what, what the warehouse um, senior user instructed to the warehouse user is to take the laptop with the serial number, whatever they extracted previously, and we haven't covered here a, a report in order to learn where this particular uh, computer is located. So he instructed, he instructed to the warehouse user to move internally the laptop uh, to this designated uh, bin called disposal. And we did it, what we did now is to confirm as warehouse user that this internal movement has been taking place. Although the laptop hasn't been given to anyone or hasn't been received to the inside the warehouse or hasn't left the storage type to, to say it more correctly. Thanks, Elena. So once we have done, we need to update the notification status. So we will move again to um, IW52 and we will change um, the status. And we have to find something called disposal in process. So we marked that the process is on. We will review um, the tasks. And for example, um, let's say that we consider this task completed, transfer equipment to warehouse. We're going to complete it. And then let's imagine that this have been also completed as well. And we save it. Now we're going to start the, the, the second part, let's say, of the process, which is the process of actually removing the material out because they uh, have been uh, sold. So this process begins with a, a document called sales order. And sales order, as I said at the beginning, is like a, an internal purchase order for the opposite, uh, um, for the opposite uh, purpose. Uh, purchase order is to acquire materials, a sales order is to uh, sell material. And this sales order is created directly from the notification. So all the documents are uh, linked. In this case, um, let's imagine that outside the system, we have selected um, the customer that we are going to sell the, the computer. In this case, we will insert the business partner, partner of the customer here in this field. And we will click on enter. So we will, we will be linking the customer to the notification. And at the same time, uh, we will, if, we click, if we click on this sales order number, a sales order will be created. Let's try to do it. Sales organization. And wish notification saved. Let me see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know what happens. This is for, okay, this is only in the training environment. In real life, you should get a sales order number. We have here in your cover page, all of you have a sales order number that we are going to use in order to substitute this uh, glitch in the training environment is the 158. But let me review again. 
if everything is correct. Okay, this is correct and it's not, okay, it's not working. Okay, so you will have to use the sales order provided in the cover page. The next um, step is from the sales order is to create an outbound delivery. The outbound delivery is a document used in order to provide the most updated, updated steps in, this, in the movement of the inventory. So you will update it with the quantity and other, in this case, it, we are selling the document, the laptop, so we are not performing any packing. But if it was the case, as you do it, for example, in the STOs, you will do all these additions uh, in the document called uh, outbound delivery. Um, from the sales order uh, provided in the cover page, what we're going to do is to generate an outbound delivery document. And this is done by using the tip code um, VL, VL, and page. Okay, uh, we are going to fill in the shipping point. So we don't know when the delivery has been created. And then we remove this as well. Hopefully, um, this is okay. This, um, this report works like a traffic light. So depending on the dates, you will see that the traffic light has a red light, yellow light or green light. And the lights depend on the um, days that are remaining for the delivery date. For example, here you will wonder why we see all the traffic light in red color. And this is because the goods issue date was uh, stated for the 28th of April, which is uh, two days ago. That's why it's giving you like a, a red. These items should have been, um, let's say, issued already and the outbound delivery um, should be already in the past. When we see a green, a yellow uh, light is because the planned goods issue date is between the current day, the day of today and the next 30 days. If we see this traffic light with, with uh, green color is because the goods issue plan date is beyond 30 days. So this is uh, the meaning of the, of the colors in the report. And we will select uh, the sales order uh, button and we will cre create background because what we need is to uh, generate an outbound delivery document uh, from the sales order. So we want to see the outbound delivery document and therefore we're going to click on the magnifying lens. So. Um, if we see here, the originating document uh, corresponds to the sales order number that you will be generated from the notification and the sales document is the outbound delivery document. You may want to take note as well in your cover page. It's the number in my case, eight, four, zeros, three, six, five. Um, this is the business partner of the customer, and this is other uh, related data. Thanks, Elena. Thanks, Elena. I think it's a, it's a good step to maybe uh, take our break now in the morning since we're almost up to the hour, and you have already processed this uh, last step, taking note of your uh, document. Maybe we can stop here, take a five minute break. There's also a discussion in the chat. Uh, nothing more uh, 
uh, besides what we've already discussed, except for a question uh, by uh, Roland asking about who decides to whom the laptop is sold. So basically uh, two questions in one, right? Uh, we're deciding at some point to whom this laptop is sold because we're going through a sales process. And uh, thankfully also uh, Gianluca and Nicola have been jumping in the chat and uh, providing the answer. Uh, basically saying that you would go through the commercial sales process uh, put in place by procurement. And uh, there's also more there. So uh, basically there's a discussion amongst themselves here. Uh, also Gianluca adds uh, it's an offline process, of course, and uh, Roland comes back with. So in that part, Graciela was uh, kicking in. Okay, basically. All right, perfect. Uh, and Gianluca, the last uh, comment here, the question about sales order. It should be created upon procurement confirmation that the vendor purchased the item sold by UN. Could that be that this vendor is not registered for the sales order or all vendors that participate to a sale are registered? Advance? OK, very good question. So Gianluca basically is wondering if the before we actually create this sales order, the vendor should already be registered or it's not necessary to have the vendor registered prior. And in this case, uh, if we're already creating, and, and also Nicola is jumping in with this, uh, Elena, just so you know, I'm sure you're looking at the chat right now too. Uh, the vendor should be registered before actually creating this sales order to participate in this exercise. So we, we cannot or uh, create, I'm sure there may be exceptional situations, but in this particular case for write off a disposal method sale, you should always have the uh, vendor registered before generating this sales order. Uh, thank you, Nicola, and thanks for the question, Gianluca. Okay, that makes sense. The BP number itself is actually obtained through this registration of the vendor. Okay, without it, yeah, we wouldn't have the BP number. Very good. Thank you, Nicola. Okay, Elena, that uh, was just uh, for your information. Besides that, uh, no other questions, but I think that at the point that you're at, maybe it's a good time to take the break now and come back at uh, maybe 11.05. Okay. Okay, see you. Okay, thank you guys. If there's anything else, we'll discuss it in, in five minutes.
Okay, so we should, uh, we're two minutes uh, over. So uh, Elena, whenever you want, I'm just uh, making sure that there's nothing new. I, th I think uh, Gianluca was the last one to make a comment in the chat. Uh, do you create the potential buyers or only the winners? Okay. All right, I see this direct question here. Uh, Gianluca, maybe, uh, I don't know if you want to expand on that question. Do you create all the potential buyers? Or only the winners, meaning if we create MVPs, okay. Uh, uh, Ryan, maybe it's uh, faster instead of uh, typing. Um, going back to um, to the issue before going uh, on break, uh, I'm not sure that uh, procurement. Well, uh, I'm not sure that uh, you create all the BPs, all the vendors, uh, potential buyers, in the, in the system. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have. Uh, any procurement expert, but I'm sure our colleagues uh, uh, that are more familiar with the system can intervene. I think uh, it, they create only the winners. Uh, in fact, uh, okay, I don't want to go into details now of the sale, but uh, I recall that the 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 10 percent uh, in order to participate to the sale, the 10 percent of the the value, the money that they have to obligate. Um, was given by check and was kept by procurement to save instead of uh, depositing into the banks where they need to be where they need to be then create BPs in that case. So in order to avoid all this, they kept the checks in the safe and then uh, returning them to the losers and and uh, then registering only the winners. Again, I'm going by you know what i recall i might be wrong but that's why i'm asking nicola or whomever is more familiar with the process to confirm or or explain better thanks i can try i can try to answer your question by let, let's say a common sense who whoever has a uh, let's say a financial relationship with the uh, iun entity must have a, a bp numbers um, a bp number we we do have BP numbers, we as uh, employees, because there's a financial uh, relationship with the, with the uh, the entity we work for. So I guess that even if uh, the deposit, let's say the preliminary deposit, is uh, handled in uh, with with a check, kept in a safe, uh, I reckon that uh, there's a receipt that is issued to the person who deposits his money, the person, the entity, the commercial entity. So I, I guess that uh, to even participate to the bid, to acquire something, to, to purchase something from the, uh, from the UN or a mission or whoever, a, a BP number is, uh, is essential, is a prerequisite. Yeah. Uh, Again, Nicole, uh, yeah. both of us, we do not work in, in procurement. We might not be completely aware of the, yeah. of the let's say, details. I, I'm trying to, to use common sense. Uh, any financial relationship has to be, let's say, formalized uh, with, with a BP number, a registration. And actually, registration is not, uh, let's say, that difficult. It is offered uh, through the procurement uh, portal uh, web, web-based portal. May I jump again, in? Again, Nicola. Yeah, sorry, Gianluca. No, again, Nicola. Uh, we will find a way to clarify this. Maybe Joe can can uh, elaborate later. Um, I think uh, the reason. Uh, I mean, I I think just to avoid the creation of several BPs, you, you will recall hundreds of vendors, potential vendors. Uh, I call Graziella just... for this. Uh -huh. Okay, what did she say? Okay, she said that uh, nevertheless, if vendors are not uh, registered, they can participate to the sales. Upon the uh, upon the, that procurement will assign the lot to the winning uh, bidder, and if it's not uh, uh, registered, they they ask MDM in Brindisi to register this vendor and to create a business partner. And, so the, that the, they and the, they carry on with the ass assignment of the sales order and uh, the assignment of the lot and the relevant payment. 
I, so I remember well then. So they, they only um, create the BPs at the end of the exercise when they know the, the winner name. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so sorry if I... No, 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 Nicola, I mean, I had the same doubt. It's just that uh, okay. I, I had this in my mind that uh, in several meetings uh, there was a discussion because it's a lot of work to create BPs for all the potential vendors it because is. you don't know how many they will uh, come and, and uh, bid. And um, it was found this um, shortcut to uh, to avoid the creation of uh, several BPs waiting the end when you know the number, the name of the vendor, and then in that case, if it's not created, you ask MDN and Brindis to create it. Okay. Exactly. Thanks. Thanks okay. anyway. Thanks. Yes. And Thanks. if I may add a little bit, um, the same, let's say, company or individual can have a business partner, but if you cannot see him in the sales and distribution module for sales order, can be because of the role. Because one thing is to create a business partner and the second step is to assign a role. Uh, for example, myself, I can have a role of vendor, but also customer. So if I'm a vendor to the UN, I will be visible in the SRM portal for procurement. But if I'm not assigned a role of a, of a customer, I will not be able, I, my BP number will not be visible in, uh, in the sales and distribution module where we create sales order. So yes, they, they I mean, in order to, to be inserted into Moya, all have to have a business partner, but not only a business partner, but they have to have the role assigned. For example, us as an employee have a role, but we cannot serve as a customer or, or a vendor. We have a, a role called FI role that it's only um, used for the UN making payments to us. So the, there are a set of business partner category and also a business partner roles, and they have to match. If, if you, when you are, deployed in the mission if you encounter uh, errors is because maybe the role is not correct. Okay. Um, yep. Thank you. So let's move. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, Helena, whenever you want. Thank you all for this conversation. I think it was very valuable. So, yes, we stopped before the break. Uh, we created a sales order as the customer was already identified and we um, uh, linked the customer to the notification as well as the sales order created. Remember that here in, in the demo, we haven't been able to create because of the training environment, but in real life, you should be able to create the sales order directly from the notification. Then what it's missing is um, three things. From the inventory side, uh, we will editing the outbound delivery documents and also we will post the goods issue against the outbound delivery in order to confirm that the materials have left let's say the inventory uh, here is where you usually update items like the storage location and the quantity for example as well as the dates and here is the inventory user using um, reducing the stock available uh, available in the inventory the second step is from the warehouse side where they will move the items from the bin called disposal to let's say outside the storage type assigned for goods issues or issues of from the inventory and in this area is where the the customer comes and collects the laptop and the last set of steps is to complete the notification and update the equipment so there are three let's say group of steps uh, once in inventory others in the warehouse and others related to the notification and um, to the equipment Okay, um, we already created the outbound delivery uh, document against the sales order. And another tip, because um, we let's imagine that you we have forgotten what is the outbound delivery generated. So there is a T code called uh, 
there is a T code called VA03 that it's going to link the sales order with the possible, with the one or more than one outbound delivery documents. In this field order, we will insert our sales order extracted from the notification. And we will be able, if I click in this button, I prefer to see it this way. Outbound delivery, and this is the number. This is one way of finding the outbound deliveries. On the other hand, if you are a logistics user and you want to see what are the pending outbound deliveries that are scheduled to, 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 the, to, to be created or edited in a, a set of period like this week or this month, you may want to check a report of, on the outbound deliveries. It's a very similar report, like the inbound deliveries, but specifically for the outbound deliveries. So if for the inbound delivery was VL06I, for the outbound deliveries, VL060. And then you want to check what are the outbound deliveries for picking. So you will click here among all the Options is not for good issue. It's in this case is uh, for picking. You will complete the shipping point of your plant, and then let's remove. This is a report. Let's remove the rest of the dates. We select picking data without the warehouse or only with warehouse. Well, I select both, so I don't restrict any results. And let's see, okay, these are, if we see in the first column, this is a report of all the pending outbound deliveries with the goods issue date. So as a logistics user, they will uh, see that all these outbound deliveries are already due in the time. They should have uh, been created or cleared uh, already. Um, we are going to collapse and let's say, okay, for this week, what are the planned outbound deliveries? What are the items that, I, that are leaving the inventory, uh, either with a stock transfer order or in this case, because we are selling a piece of document and what I need to prepare. Uh, for the delivery date, uh, departing from my plant, for the delivery date of the 28th, which is the last one, we don't have anything for today. We have two outbound delivery documents. So I have identified this, um, which is um, ours. And let's edit. This is the outbound delivery document. And then we're going to, in this case, sorry, it's pulling all the information from the sales order uh, and at the same time from the notification. So we created, uh, this is the, the, I mean, the data is already pre-populated based on that, uh, the material, uh, the quantity, etc. What we need to do is um, to insert the storage location that owns uh, the laptop. In this case, you will find the storage location in your cover page. I have checked already, is this one owning the computer and is this one who is selling, uh, writing off and selling the laptop. Um, I think for the rest of the info, it's uh, correct. Let's check. Okay, this outbound delivery has been saved and this was a transaction that belongs to the inventory, meaning that the items are already prepared in order to be um, uh, moved or distributed to the, to the buyer. The next steps is to physically pick up the laptop from the disposal bin and put in them outside the storage type. So it's available for physically picking uh, the material. 
Uh, in order to do that, we will create a transfer order for picking goods from the warehouse, okay? To a stagnant area for goods issue. And it, the T code is LT03. And this is what we are going to do. We will create a transfer order. The, this is the warehouse, the plant, and this is my outbound delivery document. I'm going to click on enter, and here I'm going to generate the stock removal in the foreground button. So the system is proposing um, where to get the, the, the laptop, okay? Um, the system get, proposes uh, that the laptop is selected from this bin based on the FIFO um, how do you say, criteria, first in, first out. So it's proposing to collect the laptop from this bin. But actually, we already placed the laptop in a bin called disposal. So what we're going to do is to edit. I mean, we can leave it like this, but if we have already um, put aside the laptop somewhere, we are going to specify this uh, location at this moment. Yeah. Our laptop has been placed in the bin for disposal. I remove the quant. And if you see, the destination is already pre-populated. The system is proposing shipping area deliveries that we move the laptop from the current bin to an area for deliveries. So if it's everything correct, then we will click. And save. This is our transfer order for picking. It's a transaction from the warehouse and it's the 1218. Once the warehouse user has uh, moved the items um, into this uh, area for deliveries, they will have to confirm by running the TICO for confirmation of. Um, transfer orders, which is LT12. This is the 1218 is correct, is our uh, transfer order for picking. We select here pick and transfer, this is the action, and we confirm internally. We review that the material is what has been put uh, in this area for deliveries. So if this is the action done, we will confirm. If you see this is all grayed out, so the warehouse user will not be able to change. It's able only to confirm or not confirm. I don't see a message stating that it has been no, I don't want to exit, but I want to. Okay, confirmed. The next action is to um, remove this quantity from the inventory um, of the storage location that was 3101. So uh, we clear the numbers in the inventory. This is done by the inventory user and it's by using the T code VL060, 60, excuse me. In this case, we will not click for picking, but we will click for goods issue. We will state it's a report the shipping point, and I'm going to remove the dates in order to make sure that it appears.
So these are, these are all the outbound deliveries that have been uh, processed and issues. Um, these are mine. So these are the goods issues for outbound deliveries to be posted. Basically, what I'm saying is that this outbound delivery has been processed already, and what I need is to uh, reduce the quantity in the inventory side. What I will do is to um, post goods issue, and this is the posting date of the issue, the goods issue, meaning by this date, uh, we will have one quantity less in the inventory. Ah, okay, I didn't enter the serial number. Okay. Um, so in order to select the serial number of the material, I need to click on, let me see. It's one sec. Hmm. Here it is, and I will insert. I cannot. <laughs> Serial number. No serial numbers are maintained for this item or the quantity is zero. Let me check. Sorry guys, I need to try. Ah, here it is. I will specify what is the serial number the laptop. No. Okay, this is the goods issue. I'm taking notes um of the goods issue and then the last step is to update the notification and deactivate the equipment is there any comment is there any comment in the in the chat brian nothing there uh, elena. elena nothing in the chat so uh, if everything's uh, going well there from your side, from our side, nothing, unless someone wants to uh, jump in. So you were able to uh, add the uh, serial number, right, to the uh, equipment. It went well. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have removed this item from uh, from the inventory. Sorry, again. I need to review the tasks. Um, let's imagine that uh, I will not be able to complete. Okay, because some of them have been completed. I wanted to. complete in a batch, and then um, I want to change the status of the notification as uh, disposal completed. Then all the tasks have been completed and the status have been to set to completed. So what I need to do is to complete the notification as a whole. And this will be the reference date for the completion of the notification. From the side of the complete of the notification, it is completed, and the last step is to deactivate the equipment as it, it is not longer in uh, in our inventory and in our warehouse. So I will use the T code IEC2 and will update the equipment. Just let me check that this is our number. Yes, 
78. So Elena, before you do that, at this point, since you, I see that you finalized the notification and now that you're pretty much going to the last step, I suppose, yes. in terms of uh, updating the equipment, right? Can you just quickly summarize uh, the, the last few steps that you performed uh, when you were adding this realization number to the equipment, uh, just to make sure that we're all following and we're all at the same page. Yes. Okay. Once, um, once we have identified in the right of process, uh, we are selling the laptop. And in order to sell the laptop, we create a document called sales order. Okay. The sales order is created directly from the notification. Um, and what we do once we have a sales order number is to perform a series of inventory and warehouse actions in order to um, to reflect what is happening in the reality, which is to we are going to reduce the inventory levels uh, in this case by quantity one, and we are going to physically move the laptop uh, from an, an bin that we have place the computer into outside for the customer to come and pick up the laptop directly. This is the series of actions that we have done. So from the sales order document, which is the document that reflects the, the sale, uh, it has uh, the business partner uh, of the customer. The customer, as we said, has to have the role of UN customer. And then it has the material, the reference, etc. We, the logistics user, runs a report in order to see what are the pending items that in the plant that he has been mapped to. What are the pending items that are mapped to be, let's say, to leave the the inventory and to leave the mission. Uh, he will see in these reports items that are included into stock transport order, but also will see items that are in an outbound delivery that corresponds a sales order, which is, is which is the case that we are uh, handling today. Uh, he will run a, a report to see what are the pending outbound, outbound deliveries to be processed, uh, or he also can ex extract the outbound delivery number from a sales order. In, in any of those cases, what this person will do is to check what is the material and uh, um, check what is the quantity and make other additions if this is the case. It's very similar to what is an inbound delivery. In inbound delivery, we use it in order to update items that are incoming to the plant. An outbound delivery is to update um, materials that are leaving the plant. Um, and this is an inventory transaction. And then, at the same time, not then, but at the same time, the items can be moved in the physically from a storage type and a bin called that we placed the item before, that we put aside the, the laptop when it was identified for disposal. In this case, um, we are moving the laptop from this area that we selected in previous steps. And we are placing physically outside the storage type so the customer can come and pick it up. So this is the warehouse transactions that we are doing. And when the laptop has been put outside and is ready for the customer to pick it up, we will perform like a goods issue against the outbound delivery. We will, uh, it's just the opposite of uh, posting goods receipt. We will mark the inventory as with one quantity less, which is the case if, if the sale was for 10 units, we will reduce the, the inventory in 10 units. In this case, it's one unit. And we are only, we are also uh, marking what is the serial number that we have sold. Uh, so we are reducing the inventory, not only with the material number, but also with the serial number that we have identified for write-off and we are selling to the customer. And this is what we just did. 
And basically what we need to do is to complete the notification and also to this specific equipment with the specific serial number deactivated because it's no longer in the UN uh, premises. Okay. Yes, thanks, Elena. Uh, thank you. I think that uh, was a very good summary of, of the actions you performed. Uh, just in case, since I know we have uh, people that are that are just really starting with these transactions, a lot of the times in a, in a scenario like this one that is so long, there are so many roles involved jumping back and forth, understanding uh, what you're doing at every step, also their responsibility when performing these transactions when they're deployed in the mission, knowing exactly uh, or at least discussing what actions they will be performing versus the ones that will be performed for them is also very important. So at this stage that you have already uh, pretty much completed the, uh, uh, all the way up to, I think, step uh, 17, right? Complete notification task by the disposal planner. The notification completion was also done, uh, uh, changing the status to disposal completed. And now, like you were saying, the, the last thing is to deactivate the equipment. All right? Yes. Thanks, Elena. This is done by the equipment master data maintenance local who is managing the equipment. So it's going to mark as the equipment deactivated as it's not longer in the UN. So the f one thing they will do is to um, review the, the equipment and maybe add a note stating that this post disposal is completed. Okay. Ah. Okay. And then um, he will go to this navigational menu on the top and um, we'll click on functions, activate, inactivate. We'll deactivate this equipment, I mean this material with this serial number. After doing that, we click on save. Do you want to carry on with my warning? Okay, the equipment is inactive. And yes, this is the complete end to end process. I don't know if there is any, let me see, question in the chat. Yes, Lena, there is. Uh, Pietro is just adding a uh, comment here about the system status of the equipment. <clears throat> so basically, in this case, uh, Pietro is mentioning that the, uh, the system status is changed to ECUS, equipment to customer. The user status could be changed into EQSL as well. So at this point, uh, the equipment status, I know you've deactivated it, but there is no... Uh, and there, there is probably an automatic uh, system change of status as it always does so automatically when you added uh, the activation. Uh, I think if we can revisit that equipment so we can see the last system status and then the uh, user status that Pietro is talking about, I believe in this case uh, could be changed to EQSL, meaning uh, is that maybe the best way uh, forward because right now we see that the the system status is, I think there are two system statuses uh, simultaneously, right? Daniel was also talking about this yesterday. E ECU. At customer side, an mm -hmm. object deactivated. There you go. Okay, so that's correct. Uh, and then the user status, uh, the last user status that was selected is probably the one that's there. Right off in process. Yeah, yeah. maybe the last one should have been sale disposal sale disposal method. Well, at this point, I don't think I'm able to, to change it, but let's try. I think there is a way uh, to... Ah, uh, I changed it. You can it. do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We will deactivate. Yes, you are correct. Uh, I missed one part. It should have been sale disposal method. All right. So that that is just basically... Um, 
so we see that the system status automatically when Elena deactivated changed, as we remember. But then it's always uh, important in the responsibility of whoever has the role of SD11 to make sure the user status matches right, the system status in, in a way. Because when we pull reports, remember we did this, I believe, uh, during day three or four, we were looking at the system statuses and, and user statuses of equipment and realized that if uh, things are not matching, what it does is it rings uh, uh, an alarm, right, when we're pulling reports and we say, okay, we should review these pieces of equipment because the statuses are not, they do not seem to be accurate, right? Would they not seem to match? So this would have been one of those cases to check. And we realized that basically the only thing we're missing is to just change user status, but the process was performed correctly. So it's important. And thanks for that observation, uh, Pietro and uh, Daniel for jumping in there too. Uh, exactly, right? So we, as we were talking about reports, this would be one of those things when we pull reports, realize that uh, user status doesn't match what the system status is saying. And we'd have to dive in and see what's going on there. In this particular case, it was easy and simple, and we just uh, changed it ourselves. Also, something Daniel was mentioning yesterday, and I'm uh, reiterating it today, is the double status of the system status. We see that Elena just deactivated, and nonetheless, we have still two system statuses, which we realize that that is not always an alarm for a mistake. That is actually the, the system maintaining the last uh, statuses it has, right? So it had first the, uh, in this case, it needs two of them, a customer site because it was a disposal by sale, and also that this the uh, actual uh, material is deactivated in the system. So double status, but not a mistake. Okay, well, thanks, okay. Elena, for that. Uh, anything else uh, we may want to discuss uh, at this point, now that we have deactivated the, the uh, piece of equipment, the statuses as well. Any particular aspect of the disposal method by sale that may have not been clear? No. No, it so, doesn't seem you know, so. Before we break, we you could do this short quest, um, form and then we break for lunch, if it's okay with you. Uh, Elena, this is the survey for the morning session or is this like a polling question? Polling survey. questions. Ah. Okay. All right, just because, all right, I think Daniel has also shared one. So I think Daniel has shared, okay, the same one, right, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just uh, click on them and make sure, but I think that, yeah, you have both. Uh, and actually, no, they're different. I think Daniel shared the survey of the morning session and you have shared the polling questions. Okay, thanks, yeah. Daniel, for deleting that uh, comment. So let's start with your polling questions first. And then we'll add the, uh, the survey for the morning session afterwards. Okay, everyone, so take a look at the chat, click on uh, the link that Elena has just added, and uh, I think it's five questions as we've been doing so far. And we can take a look at that maybe at the beginning of the afternoon session to see what the answers have been and if uh, we're happy with them or not, and uh, maybe what we can improve on in the explanation to make sure that we clarify if anything has not been clarified by now. So Elena, if you can uh, keep an eye on the uh, completion of the polling questions and when we have uh, at least the same amount of, we have 37 attendees in today's session. So more or less when we have that amount of responses, maybe we can finalize with uh, the survey for the session. Okay, there are three so far.
All right, I see people are writing messages in the chat. Uh, just to make sure before you disconnect from the session, if you're already answering the polling questions, I think maybe we can also share the uh, survey uh, for the morning session. Uh, Daniel, if you could quickly, uh, just before people start disconnecting. I see Luis, Carlo and, and Roland have uh, already um, posted messages uh saying uh thank you and uh, enjoy your lunch so just to make sure we have 20 answers i see on uh, elena's screen thanks daniel so also please uh take uh, two minutes to answer the survey for the morning session and those of you who are not done yet with the polling questions please complete that as well i just want to make sure that we all get a chance to um, complete both the uh, links that we're sharing in the chat before we call it a, a day for the morning session so I'm reviewing the questions and as a recap, let's see if we can answer these questions all together. So for right of and disposal by sale of... Uh, Elena, I, I don't know if it's maybe uh, better if, to just leave it for the beginning of the afternoon session. Ah, OK. okay. Right, yeah, just in case, uh, because I see people may still be answering the uh, polling questions. See, there's still answers coming in. So maybe we can just leave that for the beginning of the afternoon session before we jump into BI. Okay. And, uh, and just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave the next uh, five minutes for you guys to answer the polling questions, take your time, and the same thing for the survey. And uh, we can call it a day. When you're ready, you can just uh, exit the session. I can stop the recording as well now unless there are any other questions. If not, I'll just leave you guys the time to answer the, the survey and the polling question. 